I am going to share times in which I believe I was absolutely gaslit. But before I get into the stories that I have to share, or more like instances, because I'm not, I'm not really going to like express really what was going down and happening, because I don't think it really matters at this point. The reason I want to clarify something in the beginning is this is just 100% coming from me, my account. I cannot claim to know what was in that person's mind, what this person was just thinking about, what they were going through to make them resort to such a treatment toward me. But I will state what I believe might have been the cause given what I do know about these individuals involved. The very first thing I want to say is that I'm aware that maybe some of these incidents were not even deliberate. I don't believe that someone was actively trying to manipulate me into questioning how sane I am or trying to make me feel like I'm crazy or anything. I just think that this might be the case of individuals who had their own behavior unchecked for a long time until they met me and I guess some of my traits just made me more susceptible to falling prey to such a thing. So take this however you want. I am sharing this because I feel like this is one of the few things in life that I believe is a gray area. It's no black or white type of situation. But I do believe that these conversations are important to be had. And who knows, maybe this will help someone out there navigate through something or maybe become confident about talking about it. Because I know that for the longest time, I was not. And my life changed the moment that I opened up. Being told I was sensitive. When I'm told that I'm sensitive, it's weird to me because I don't think of myself as a sensitive person in the sense of being easy to offend. I think I have helped people discover that they are easy to offend because there is some stuff that's just absolutely petty and superficial that has offended people before. But when I explain to them what about it, doesn't make it offensive in my eyes. They try to say that I'm trying to justify my behavior. And in turn, I'm trying to say, well, if you're feeling this way and you are somebody who has declared me sensitive, but here you are being the sensitive one, I do believe that that is an issue on your part instead of mine. When I was told I was sensitive, it happened to be during circumstances in which I was trying to make a meaningful, personal, intimate connection. And when it comes to that, I don't play. I know how to focus. I know how to make you the center of the universe and my universe. But just because I'm doing that, it doesn't mean that my world is revolving around you. I'm just trying to say that if we're together at something, I know how to focus on you. I'm the kind of person who, when I'm talking to you, my best friend could be walking by, giving me a holler or whatever, and I will ignore them. To me, you're the only person who exists. You're the person who has my attention at that moment in time because it is your turn. And I believe that it's great. It's a great feeling when someone is actually intently listening to you, focused on you, paying attention to you. I do believe that this day and age, we have trouble with our attention span. People don't seem to be able to hold a thought for more than two minutes. That is not a problem that I have, and I'm very confident with it. But there are some people who experience a degree of discomfort with topics that makes me feel like this is clearly someone who has never had the privilege of having a meaningful emotional connection. But the very people who have always lingered on the surface are the very people to accuse me of being a sensitive person. And I'm telling myself what you are defining as me being sensitive 
is actually me being receptive and perceptive in ways that exceed what you are personally capable of because that is not something you have exercised that is not a muscle in your brain that you have exercised i have exercised that i have taken the time to do that so yes i do get to sit here and say that no i'm not sensitive the things that i'm sensitive about is the stuff that makes me feel like i legit have psychic powers I can know shit and tell shit with little to no information. And a lot of it is through feelings. But a lot of people don't believe in that because they spend too much time detached from their own selves. That is not an issue that I have. And I guess my way of being is clashing with individuals who simply cannot grasp that because that's not how they are. They really have not spent quality time with themselves. This one was particularly painful, but I remember a time I was told that I'm crazy and that I needed help. And this was when my depression was at its absolute worst and severe that it's ever been. And all I needed was somebody to intimately find comfort with. If you're someone who's involved in my personal life, that is a privilege. I don't allow just about anybody to know anything about me. There are some people who I outright kind of lie to. And what I mean by kind of is that I only tell them the half truth. Even if they're asking for more detail, I'm like, you're not privileged enough to know this information. I'm not going to say that to you, but I am going to find a way to dodge the topic or maybe replace the answer with something else that's still truthful but not necessarily the kind of answer you're looking for and that's because some people have very nosy tendencies and i hate that if i say something to you you are the sole intended recipient you don't need to be going around talking about me what i'm doing who i'm seeing where i'm going that becomes gossip that becomes just nosy tendencies and I know how to keep myself out of other people's conversations. The only way I find my way into a conversation is when somebody else involves me. But me voluntarily putting myself out there, it just doesn't happen. So when I was told that I was crazy and needed help, that was because I was opening up about struggles that I had with someone who didn't know how to handle it. It turns out that this person actually had a varying level of the same issues that I had. The only difference was that I was confident and open and willing to make myself vulnerable to face those things, whereas the other person simply did not know how to handle it. When I was told I needed help, it was because I was having meltdowns very often. Like I would emotionally just fucking break down because I was a human being overwhelmed and frustrated that an individual who I was trusting and loving simply had zero regard for my feelings and thoughts and emotions and desires and needs and wants, all of those things. That leads me back to what I mentioned a moment ago about when I'm with you, I know how to make you the center of my universe. But unfortunately, I don't know that many people in my intimate circle who make me feel that way, who deliver reciprocate the same thing that I provide for them and that's when I get upset and I get annoyed and I'm like if I'm able to give you your place when you're with me why can you not do the same it's so fucking easy if you're with me everybody else stops to exist especially if you're not committed to them in any kind of way but I would feel offended any time I felt neglected and I would try to communicate that with individuals like that and that shit just never went well for me. The difference between me in the present versus me at the time that this happened is that at the time that this happened I wasn't aware that this individual had issues that had gone unaddressed for a long time and little did I know that I was actually the person who probably needed to arrive in this person's life to make them aware that that was a thing they were suffering with, but nobody would point it out because this is a person who loved to linger in the surface. Me, as someone who's not afraid to get deep, discovered that stuff. But now that I 
have matured some and just acquired confidence in areas that I never had confidence in and especially support. It's like I can walk into any situation now and feel invincible. But at the time when that wasn't the case, when I didn't feel like I was being backed up and my own confidence was low already, I just had no chance to emerge victorious from that situation. Another instance I can think of where I felt I might have been gaslit is being told that I cannot let go of the past, let it be my own individual past or my past with somebody else. And when it comes to the past, I actually know how to let go of it very easy. I'm an incredibly forgiving person and if you know me very well, you know that is true. You can do me extremely dirty and somehow I can still come back and be there and care for you and still welcome you with open arms and still have a generous tendency towards you even if you don't fucking deserve it and you give me back so little and I'm just perfectly cool, perfectly fine with it because remember that the way that I look at life is the point of being alive is to relieve misery and I know how to live up to that. When it comes to my shared past with someone, again, I was dealing probably with someone who had issues that had not been addressed for a long time. And this person just shielded themselves in a way where they just became completely detached from their issues. And it's almost like they were trying to pretend that it wasn't existing, even though I was showing the evidence that that is indeed an issue that they have but as opposed to just at least accepting it maybe even embracing it and finding ways to cope with it i ended up being attacked but fortunately i have brave courageous tendencies and i guess i made it out of that one with positive results but it was extremely disappointing that I was being accused of being someone who couldn't let go of the past as if I hold grudges. I don't hold grudges. Anytime I'm accused of holding grudges is because a behavior that's problematic still exists. If something from the past that's harmful has not changed, I am not going to pretend that suddenly it is okay. Something from the past that I may not let go of is when that issue from the past is still real to this day but if that issue gets resolved i guarantee you the past stays behind but i think that remembering the past is important so that you know how to tackle your present if an issue takes place today maybe i can recur to the past to the origin of the problem and I may know how to better address it. But some people look at it as I'm holding grudges. If you can demonstrate to me that you no longer display the tendencies of problematic behavior that you had in the past, I ain't gonna bring it up. But if that is something that clearly has not been resolved or improved on, I will bring it up. And it's not about maintaining a tense topic present in our lives or anything like that but it's because i don't like to let issues go unresolved you just have to accept it deal with it carry on another way i felt i was gaslit was when i was being made to feel like i had no right to feel the way that i did and the best way i can describe that is let's say that i talk about well i am struggling because I tend to not really advance in things like my career and therefore sometimes I get into financial trouble and I may linger there for a while and then I talk about the things that make me feel discouraged or not motivated enough to pursue such things. Like I don't think that my situation is as worse as it gets of course but as someone who doesn't have challenges that aren't extremely severe, like say I don't have any immediate health issues that are hindering me from living a full life more than not, or say I don't have the issue of homelessness or anything like that, it's like 
what are you depressed about? It's not like you're dealing with, I don't know, this crippling disease. It's not like you're dealing with struggling to figure out where your next meal is going to come from or where you're going to spend the night, something like that. I look at that as you are trying to invalidate and minimize the feelings based on what status I'm currently inhibiting. Like say, oh, because my basic needs are met, I don't have a right to feel incomplete in other areas. I will always acknowledge that my basic needs are met, fortunately. What I will admit is when I do feel that even though those basic needs are being met, it's not happening easily. And it's not happening without it costing me something. Like say, at some point, I wasn't able to even make my own meals anymore. And as a result, I started gaining weight. And when I started gaining weight, my self-esteem was decreasing. And my physical well-being was changing because I felt tired more often. I felt like physically... I wasn't necessarily getting tired, but I felt that my performance was not what I'm used to. I love feeling great. Feeling good is all right. Feeling all right. Feeling well is okay. But I like to feel my best. When something like that is happening, I'm not feeling my best. What was causing me to, to neglect my diet? Well, the fact that stuff happened in my life to where my attention from my own body had to be taken away because say I needed to make extra money. You guys know how I feel about that. I have made videos about the cost of pursuing ambition and stuff like that. In my situation, it wasn't even about ambition. It was about the decisions that others make such as inflating prices and increasing rent and all that bullshit. That shit catches up with me. So unfortunately, my life as I knew it is changing. Something is going to have to change. And by change, it could mean something is no longer going to get done. Or I may need to sacrifice something in the name of maintaining something else. And it just was not a sustainable model. And remember that when it comes to this stuff, I'm primarily alone more than with company. And I'm not saying that to blame others for the struggles that I'm having, but it's more of acknowledging where my challenges are. But the individual who made me feel gaslit was saying, well, you have no right to feel the way that you do since when we hang out, I noticed that you have this, I noticed that about you, I noticed that your home is put together, and I noticed that you don't have any like health issues, I don't see you with a cast on your foot or something, or I don't see you missing an eye. To me, those are superficial remarks. It's almost as if you're too afraid to go beneath the surface to understand where the struggles that I'm expressing come from. And interestingly enough, the very person who said this to me started to talk in the same way that I was talking at the time that they said that. Like talking about, I wish I had more support from my family or things like that. And I said, it sucks, doesn't it? Well, try that and also try saying that to someone who's going to absolutely gaslight you about it. It's good, isn't it? It feels great to be able to express yourself and be welcomed and accepted for it, right? That is literally what I was looking for from you. But what you did was blame me, like the victim, for feeling that way. So that's one of those instances in which I feel that this is an individual, again, I've said this multiple times, but this was an individual who had their behavior not checked for a long time, and it took me arriving in the picture to force this person to face that shit. And I guess this person was living comfortably in their little bubble for too long. And I'm just happy to say that even though I appeared to be the person giving problems, not only was I screaming for help so that I don't become as damaged as I can get, possibly irreparably so, but also I was able to expose someone who had issues that they were not willing to face. 
And finally, this goes on par with when I said someone told me that I was crazy. But another thing I was told that made me feel I might have been gaslit was being told that stuff is just in my head. And that bothers me a lot because, again, it's a form of invalidating my experience, my perception, my feelings. And I think that's one of the most damaging things you can do to a human being because your mental well-being is important just as much as your physical one because if you're mentally impaired then there are certain functions that you're just not going to be able to perform mental capacity exists there even if you cannot really materialize it it materializes in other ways which would be the way that you do your job the way that you exhibit yourself like say do you have enthusiasm do you have energy do you have passion do you make others feel happy and comfortable around you are you that person who as soon as you walk in the room kind of like brightens up or are you the person who people kind of feel tense the moment that you arrive because they're anticipating that rigidity is on its way something like that so when you say to someone that stuff is in their head that is incredibly damaging because this is someone who's finally possibly starting to share things about themselves that they were too afraid to and when you start attacking them speaking up stops being a rewarding experience if you want people to speak up you have to make it a rewarding experience interestingly enough that is something that in more recent times has become very defining for me and it was the moment that i dared to open up to someone i never would have considered opening up to and just how good that experience went it's happened to me with two individuals and i thought wow had i had you just maybe a year or two or three or four or five or six sooner you would have saved me from so much pain and trouble and so much insecurity and meltdowns and shit but as much as i suffered during that time there's a part of me that's grateful that i went through that because i feel like now i am quick at identifying when i may be having a struggle on the way and i'm not as embarrassed to succumb to it because I know how to pull myself out of it. And even the times when it takes me longer to heal myself, I'm still grateful for it because I remember a time when I would linger in that darkness for weeks, months, years at a time. And now I can say that when something like that catches up to me, it only lasts a few hours or maybe a couple of days some instances it's over minutes so clearly there's been some improvement and i find that i heal from something faster if i share the struggle like anytime i recur to one of the individuals i trust and i'm like hey that bullshit is happening to me again i wasn't going to tell you anything but it's happening and they're just there and helping and providing suggestions on ways to snap out of it holy shit it really makes a difference when someone actually cares and doesn't see you as a burden and what i learned is that that is the absolute proof to me that somebody loves me because i for the longest time that's been one of my struggles i really don't feel like people want me or need me or love me and those who do sometimes have feel like it comes with strings attached and the folks who i started treating like that like their love was conditional i actually confronted them and life was not good the moment that this happened but after time went on that's when i started feeling like maybe that person began to value what i was providing the moment that they had lost me well that's it you guys i hope that this topic was interesting at the very least my intention by sharing such thing is honestly to hear feedback from those of you who tend to provide the feedback that i feel really elevates me 
and helps me see things different. If you think that these points are in no way gaslighting, let me know because I have been learning about the things that I had been mislabeling about myself and uh, I don't have any problems admitting that I have a lot of shortcomings when it comes to understanding these things. When it comes to emotional discussions, mental discussions, I'm confident about having them, but I'm not very confident about how I process them in the bigger picture, depending on what it is. If it's something about my intimate life, like that's when I'm 100% confident and no, you're not gonna beat me at it. But when it comes to more general things involving other people, like outside of myself, then that's when I'm like, okay, because I have the tendency of being isolated for long periods of time. There's some stuff that I'm just not, not going to develop and I need help and guidance. And what better way to do it than by exposing myself from people from different ages, walks of life and location. All right, guys, that's it from me. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you soon.